So you're working out hard, you're lifting, sweating, recovering, but the gains, they're not what they should be. In a previous video, I broke down muscle growth like a construction site, basically how your workouts call in the workers and protein is the raw material. Today, we're going a bit deeper. We're talking about when to eat protein for maximum muscle synthesis, how pre-sleep nutrition gives you a literal night shift for gains, why carbs and fats still matter, yes, even for lean muscle, and what creatine actually does at the cellular level. This isn't a surface level breakdown. This is the blueprint that serious lifters, athletes, and health focused people should be following. If you've been training and not seeing the results you expected, this may be the missing piece. Let's dig in. So previously I compared your muscles to a construction site. Workouts signal damage. Your body sends in workers, uh, enzymes and, and growth factors to rebuild. But without the raw material, protein, nothing gets done. But here's where we level up. When that material shows up changes everything. If the protein arrives late, you're gonna miss your window. If it comes too early, it's not used efficiently. The next few sections break down the exact timing, quantities, and combinations that science says are gonna maximize your results. So we've got the blueprint, let's build. So most of you have probably heard about the anabolic window and it's actually something we discussed in a previous video. So it's this basically this you know mythical 30 minute post workout moment where you know if you don't slam a shake you're gonna miss out on gains, but the truth is that while that window is real, what they're actually finding now is it's not just 30 minutes. In fact, studies show that muscle protein synthesis it remains elevated from anywhere from three to five hours after resistance training. So yes, it you know this post workout protein timing or protein matters but it's not a race against the clock. So you wanna aim for somewhere between 20 and 40 grams of high quality protein in that post-workout window. And if you're training fasted, you may wanna consider just a little bit of protein pre-workout as well, because basically it helps preload your bloodstream with amino acids that could help to reduce muscle breakdown. Basically what you're doing is supplying the materials right as your body needs them. And so, you know, that delivery window, it's you know, a lot more generous than we used to think, but it's still not open forever. Now, I'm guessing most of you are already aware about the importance of sleep when it comes to building muscle. And this has a lot to do with, you know, reducing cortisol and increasing testosterone, as well as sleep is when growth hormones are released. Um, but there's news research that came out, and this was, I found this, you know, super interesting, that basically says that protein before bed, it can actually significantly increase your um, overnight muscle repair. And this is especially when using slow digesting sources of protein like casein. So they did this randomized controlled trial and it was published in the Journal of uh, Nutrition. And participants, they consumed 40 grams of casein before sleep. And what that showed was increased rates of overnight muscle protein synthesis when compared to the placebo. And this was a, you know, a, a, a pretty strong study. They were looking at resistance trained young men and they used a double blind placebo controlled design. So why does this happen? Your body doesn't just recover when you're awake. Sleep is when growth hormone peaks and deep tissue repair takes place. And so if you provide amino acids before bed, your body can build muscle even when you're sleeping. Basically, again, going back to our analogy, think of it like the construction site. So, you know, the lights are off, the city's asleep, but that crew is still hard at work. When it comes to when you should be eating your protein, while timing helps, what really matters most over the long term is the total protein intake and how it's distributed throughout the day. Research shows that eating, basically you wanna be somewhere between 1.6 and 2.2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day. I aim for basically a gram per pound per day. This really maximizes muscle gain during resistance training. But here's the kicker. If you can evenly distribute that intake over the course of the day, it actually enhances your results. So there was this meta-analysis and systematic review back in 2018. It was published in the Journal of the International Society of Sports Nutrition. They reviewed 49 studies, and what they found is that protein distribution across three to four meals per day, each containing at least 0.4 grams per kilogram of protein, optimally supported muscle protein synthesis. So instead of one giant protein bomb at dinner, and I've been guilty of this, especially when I was doing intermittent fasting, really we wanna aim for four to five meals per day, each with 20 to 40 grams of protein. This helps to maintain a positive muscle protein balance and it stimulates muscle protein synthesis more effectively than just, you know, irregular intake. And think of it, you know, again, going back to our analogy, you know, like staggered deliveries to the construction site. So basically every few hours, you want a new shipment coming in in order to keep things moving smoothly. 
So there's a myth I've encountered online and, you know, of note, I think it's positive because more and more people are recognizing um, how inaccurate this is. But basically it's this idea that you should cut carbs and fat if you're trying to build lean muscle. And it's not just wrong, it's counterproductive. So carbohydrates are your body's main energy source. They fuel your workouts and they help to replenish your glycogen, which allows you to push harder in the gym. Post-workout carbs also can reduce cortisol and help drive nutrients like protein into your muscle cells. And, you know, fats are essential for hormone production, especially testosterone, which plays a huge role in muscle growth and libido. So if you cut too much fat, it can tank your performance and, and your mood and your drive. And really the key, like most things, is, is balance. In fact, there was a review that was published in the Journal of Sports Science and Medicine, and this is back in 2004, and they analyzed the nutritional needs for bodybuilding. And what they recommended uh, in terms of a macronutrient split during off-season and contest prep was 55 to 60% carbohydrates, 25 to 30% protein, and 15 to 20% fat. Now, I've previously discussed this before, but if there's one supplement that consistently delivers results backed by science, it's creatine monohydrate. Again, creatine, it, it helps by regenerating ATP, and this is the energy your muscles use for explosive movements like lifting and, and sprinting and jumping. So supplementing three to five grams daily improves strength, increases lean muscle mass, and enhances performance. There was actually this really cool comprehensive review in Nutrients back in 2022, and what they did is they highlighted the role of creatine not only in performance, but also in increasing satellite cell activity, enhancing muscle regeneration, and supporting cognitive and recovery functions. And the paper reviewed multiple randomized control trials and cohort studies. So a lot of data there supporting the use of creatine. And pro tip, if you're gonna be on creatine long-term, you likely don't need to do a, go through a loading phase. Just take three to five grams daily with water or alongside your post-workout shake. Creatine is, it's basically like the, you know, premium fuel for your construction crew. So it's not going to build the house by itself, but it definitely helps to supercharge the workers. Now let's wrap up with three mistakes that could really be holding back your muscle gains. The first is only eating protein once a day. You're missing multiple opportunities to stimulate growth. Next, ignoring carbs and fats. Energy and hormones matter. Don't starve your system. And lastly, skipping post-workout and pre-sleep protein. Your body needs fuel when it's actively rebuilding. Building muscle isn't about gym hours alone. It's about supplying your body at the right time with the right fuel. Here's your blueprint. You wanna hit between, you know, somewhere between 1.6 and 2.2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight daily, or one gram per pound. You also wanna spread it out over four to five meals, so likely somewhere between 20 and 40 grams of protein per meal. Make sure you prioritize protein after workouts as well as before bed. Keep carbs and fats in your diet. And lastly, add you know, three to five grams of creatine daily. You don't need gimmicks, just consistency, timing, and smart nutrition. Uh, I hope you found this information helpful and look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thanks.